Come on guys, stop using third-party vendors. Your FortiGate has SSL VPN built in. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. After today's earlier blog post, I figured I'd be a little bit more upbeat. Uh, last video was talking about the failure that was 624, and you know, for all intents and purposes, it's not horrible, it's just not production ready yet. Several people reached out and had issues and I went off on a rant about it. Anyways, today's video is gonna be a little bit more upbeat. We're gonna talk specifically about something that Fortinet can actually save you a good deal of money on. Uh, it's an annual recurring cost that they're gonna save you as well. So uh, I get asked very frequently, what SSL VPN vendor do I use? Um, and every time I read that, I've never actually came out and answered it or, or replied, but Every time I read that question, I just get flabbergasted, maybe that's the word, completely confused beside myself, I don't know. And the reason why I do that is because, guys, you have a unified threat management device. You have a next-gen firewall that gives you that capability. If you're not using your FortiGate for SSL VPN connections, what are you doing? Are you spending all that money on a Pulse Secure device or one of those new portal, captive portal, available anywhere things like Centrify and you know all that I I can't wrap my head around spending that kind of money but then again I am a lowest cost technically acceptable kind of guy so if you're using a third-party vendor for your SSL VPN or if you're looking for third-party vendors to use for your SSL VPN shelve it save yourself the time save yourself the money I've got a list of reasons why you want to stick to a FortiGate for that if you already have a FortiGate deployed or if you're looking at FortiGate for your next-gen firewall capability needs, why the product would probably serve multiple purposes for you. First and foremost, if you already have that Fortinet security stack in place, it's just adding one more thing to the list, which helps build that wonderful marketing term, right, of single pane of glass for your security. I hate that term, but it's kind of relevant because if you control the whole stack with a single vendor, obviously you're gonna get that uh, feature set. Cisco has some products coming out that provide the same functionality. Uh, I think Palo has some level of tie-in with their traps and their and their firewalls as well. Checkpoint has it with their firewalls and their CASP products. So obviously there's dividends to be paid if you are able to group those things together. So you get access to a laundry list of things. Your single pane of glass for your access. And that's not just, you know, a single pane of glass for you only have to go to one device to manage it. It's centralized logging that gives you that ability to correlate directly against the FortiGate, the VPN client, and anything else in the stack. But it also gives you that ability to run reports from your Forti Analyzer if you have that or anything like that. On top of that, you have the ability to run UTM against the SSL VPN clients. The SSL VPN capability within the FortiGate is very powerful. A lot of people are confused about licensing though. A common misconception with FortiGates and SSL VPN is that you have a limited number of licenses on the box, and that number is almost always 10 in people's eyes. So just to really curb that and let people know, there isn't. There's a hardware limit to the box, but there's not a software or a license limit. That 10 count that you're seeing, especially on older versions of code, that's tied specifically to the FortiGate being able to control FortiClient. That means telemetry, and synchronization of web profiles and things like that. That is not a limit on the number of users that can concurrently connect to your connection or to your network using SSL VPN. I'm gonna go over some statistics from the smaller tier boxes all the way up to the big chassis units just to let you know a little bit about what's going on. For instance, the FortiGate 30E can do 35 megabits of SSL VPN throughput, but it can allow up to 100 concurrent SSL VPN connections. Now, would I recommend letting 100 people connect to a, a 30E via SSL VPN? Absolutely not, but it's there. The capability's there. When you get up to the larger boxes like the 60F, that device has a 900 megabit SSL VPN throughput, and it allows up to 200 concurrent connections. So you're able to save the money that you would spend on a Pulse Secure or a Centrify or whatever the hell else, Zscaler, et cetera. And you can invest that in other parts of your security portfolio, whether that's policy, procedure, 
vulnerability assessments, things like that. Um, the 100F, for instance, can do like a gig of SSL VPN throughput and 500 concurrent users. And then you get to the 2200E, which is you know a higher end model, but it can do 10 gigs of SSL VPN throughput, 30,000 concurrent users. And then if you have the big boss hog, that 7060E chassis, that thing can support with relative ease 15 gigs of SSL VPN throughput, 48,000 concurrent connections. So if you're paying 20 grand a year for an SSL VPN vendor that's completely separate, you're just going to end up paying more for something that you already have. SSL VPN on a FortiGate has a couple of different features. You have tunnel mode, which allows people to actually use the software to connect like they're physically on the network. And then you have portal mode for the people you don't trust with tunnel mode. I kid. It's more so for people that are less technical savvy and you only want to spell out specific bookmarks and things like that for them. Maybe Susie can only RDP to her desktop through that portal because you don't trust her to have a machine that's actually going to meet your host checker requirements. Which brings up another thing. You can control what the host has via FortiClient and the FortiGate and you just let it ride. You can control host checker to the point where you can say it must have AV, it must have patching, it must have a certain level of Windows so you don't have Windows 7, Windows XP and all that connecting. And you can even use custom registry features so that you can look and say, is it a domain computer? Is it a computer that we own? No. And if you have Ford EMS, you can streamline the whole process. It makes it even better. We'll do more discussion about that on a later date though. So the quick and easy, in summary, Stop using third-party vendors unless you're one of those organizations that believes defense in depth truly needs to be defense in depth as in I have separate vendors for certain parts. You know, this is obviously a preference type thing, right? But if you're an organization that's balling on a budget and you want to save money, use the features that are built into the, the device that you've already bought. Single pane of glass, single point of Fortinet sign-on, single sign-on so you have that consolidated logging and visibility. You have unified threat management throughout the entire stack, throughout the entire connection process, and you're saving a buttload of money. Most people can get by with a 100F. That's 500 concurrent connections. In our current health status with COVID-19 knocking everybody to have to work from home, don't you wish you had a robust capability to allow those folks to do that? If you like videos like this, if they're providing value to you and your organization, do me a favor. Hit the like button for the video, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notify bell so you get updates whenever I release new videos. 